Good morning, everyone. Give me just one second. Oops, there I go, and I dropped my mouse. Great way to start. <laughs> okay, okay. All righty. So at this point, you are probably wondering why Matthias asked a digital television meteorologist to come and talk to you, right? Valid question. You want to know why? I'm in your pocket right now. Interesting looks on your faces. I didn't even have to say it all creepy or anything, like, I'm in your pocket. But seriously, take out your phones and open up the Weather Channel app for me, OK? Open up your Weather Channel app, and you're going to come to this. So that's going to be a look at your home screen, OK? And you're going to see the current forecast up there. Took a screenshot of that last week. It's only about five degrees cooler this week, but at least we don't have the rain, right? But where you're gonna find me and my crew is under the video section where that bottom arrow is pointing, okay? All right, so within the app, you're gonna see multiple playlists up there at the top. You can select whichever one you want. They're categorized under different things. We can create up to eight. We generally keep it at four, but the order can be rearranged any time, not just on which playlist, one, two, three, four, but the order in which the playlist is stacked. And we have analytics people that test this all day long. They'll try out different things. They might move slot one down to slot five, slot five up to slot two, and so forth. And then they'll also try out uh, different headlines just to see what people are the most interested in. And of course, the things that end up being the top performers are the ones that you generally see at the top of the playlist. It doesn't even necessarily have to be the most recent video either, just the video that seems to be performing well and capturing the audience's interest a lot. All right, so pop quiz time. You guys ready? Because there's a prize involved. All right. <laughs> what is the number one use of smartphones? Anybody want to take a crack? Besides pictures. I should have put pictures up there too. Hmm? Nope. Shopping. What's number two? Close. What do I do for a living? What do I, okay, very good. All right, I'm gonna give you the umbrella, okay? You're gonna get a Weather Channel umbrella, this gentleman right here, okay? So come up afterwards and get a Weather Channel umbrella, all right? All right, so news and weather top the list. And then music and streaming video. There are those cat videos you were talking about. And digital wallets. And of course, the space for, of course, um, hailing rides, Uber, and also Lyft continues to grow. So this was compiled uh, by Deloitte, pretty recent study. And what's interesting to me about this particular study is, you know, a lot of people have been wondering why is uh, television viewership declining? Nobody in television is, is doing anything wrong, but people have gotten sick of all of the ads. And Deloitte found in a study that if you go past 16 minutes worth of ads, that's it, 20, they're gone. Eight minutes is where most people say that they're comfortable. So with television, of course, a lot of times you have these placed commercials um, that actually goes through a department called the traffic department in local news stations. And so, of course, you know, if they don't sell ads, that TV station's not going to make money. But we all know that the viewership, of course, is really high on digital, but that's also where the advertisers have been going. So, in part, you know, because in the digital space, we can also offer non-ads. Even our app, we offer a premium subscribership just for people who maybe want to opt to not have ads and also get some additional services. So more and more companies are giving people that option. If you don't want the ads, here's a way to opt out. Some of them, you just have to click a button. Some of them, you do have to pay a little bit of money to get that. So this is where I'm from. I am a Georgia peach from Atlanta, Georgia. And this is a look at our building. So this is where I work. And why did it go away? Oh. <laughs> All right, so this is a drone shot. There it goes. My coworker Jim Robinson shot this, and it's such a beautiful building. 
We overlook the interstate from the penthouse, so I get to see how bad traffic is every single day. And trust me, in Atlanta, there is some very, very bad traffic. But it's gorgeous building. If you're ever in Atlanta, please send me a tweet. I'd love to give you a tour of the studio. Seriously, it's a really cool space. It's a small studio, but it's actually really, really, really versatile. And we crawl all over it like monkeys to get <laughs> pretty much any different uh, angles that, that we want to. Okay, all right. So I want to talk to you about a few things. Um, for starters, I want to introduce you to my team. This is my team. I love these people. They're amazing. I've been with the Weather Channel since 2006 very long time. I've worked in three different departments and now I'm currently in the digital department, which is my favorite department. And I'm not just saying that because they pay me. This is such an incredible, incredible group of people. So we only have 42 people and I say we're small but mighty. On my shift, I make anywhere between 10 and 12 videos a day. So my face is on that app 50 to 60 times per week. And that doesn't even count all the text videos that our editors are producing. We've got writers on the team. So we were purchased by IBM in 2016. IBM initially was, they were after the data. I don't know if they knew what they were in store for when they acquired a TV part of it too. Um, but they were very happy um, because within our team, they've been able to have some things happen that they, they didn't expect. We have a team, a uh, group up in New York that primarily produces documentaries. So IBM won an Emmy for the first time. So they were really excited about that. They were also really excited to find out that our viewership is quite, quite high. Our average daily views in 2019, 5.4 million. Sometimes much higher, sometimes a little lower. Again, that's just the average. The biggest day of video attempts, however, in 2019 was September the 2nd, 47.2 million views in a single day. Okay, quiz. Does anybody know what was happening on that day? Anybody want to take a guess? Hmm? Hurricane, yes. Yeah, hurricane. It wasn't Harvey, though. It was Dorian. So on September 1st, as you take a look at this timeline, um, that was the day that Dorian reached peak intensity as a Category 5 with 185 mile per hour winds. I just felt sick to my stomach when I saw that happen. And we knew once it started turning, that it was likely going to, to go into the Bahamas. We were hoping maybe it might not do that. There's always a chance that the forecast models might you know, not see something, even though they're, they're getting better. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today is tech improvements and weather. But on September 2nd, yeah. Pictures tell the story in a way. Words do not. Um, as you can tell, I still have a hard time talking about it. It's really tough. Um, but we cover a lot of different topics. Uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, winter storms, wildfires. Anybody here from Australia? Anybody? No, I was just going to say my heart is with you. Oh, my gosh. Earthquakes, heat waves, volcanic eruptions, extreme drought, flash flooding, eco-climate, viral trending, celestial events. Sometimes I cover all of that in just a single week. So, I mean... It's like, throw a dart at the wall. That's what I'm going to cover today. <sighs> the tone of how a story is delivered is key in my business. Um, I always try to tell people when they're first starting out in this business, if you see something interesting on radar and satellite, it's really easy to kind of geek out over these incredible satellite images. But the last thing you want to do is go on the air and be like, oh my gosh, look at this storm. This is absolutely amazing. Oh my God! Because that storm could be doing damage and possibly killing people. So you have to be very, very cognizant of your tone. Um, in the field, I think this goes without saying, however, I have seen it um, not be done. You have to be respectful. You are meeting the most wonderful people sometimes on the worst day of their lives. Covering aftermath, oh, it's so hard. And let me tell you, since I became a mom, I've got a six-year-old and a two-year-old, it becomes a lot harder for me to go out and do aftermath stories. Mother Nature does not choose sides. 
Mother Nature does not care if you are rich or if you're poor or if you are eight months old or 80 years old. It can still happen. Here's a look at an EF4 I covered back in Lee County, Alabama. We're here in Lee County, Alabama, one of the locations that took a huge hit from Sunday's storms. Now, look around and you can see from the ground, you see a lot of scenes like this, twisted metal trees, but when you go up into the sky and get this bird's eye view, this is when it really takes your breath away, the scope of the damage. And again, this is just one location out of many that was hard hit. 23 people died that day. Uh, the day, but actually I was out the day after, this is from the day after, but 20 people died. Uh, 23 people died the day before. Um, I interviewed a 20 year old young man who saw a dead body for the first time. That type of innocence should not be lost, you know? And that was hard for him. And I told him, you know, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. He said, no, no, no. We have to tell people what happened here. A lot of people find it cathartic to talk about it and tell their story and let people around the world know what's happened in their area. I mean, nobody wants their community put on the map because of a disaster. But, you know, it is a way to, to reach folks and, um, and some people, you know, they, they, they do want to talk about it. Um, I'm very respectful, very, very respectful people. If you tell me, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm just gonna give you a hug and walk away, okay? So I take weather really, really seriously, but not everything that we report is bad weather. Uh, we talk about newly published scientific studies. That's always really fun. Animal stories, we call it crazimals, because who doesn't love seeing a panda playing around in the snow, right? We also do some human interest stories, which I love, and I have some pictures of this one that I was just so inspired by. So there's an artist named, named Shane Grammer, and you should look at his work. So the guy basically, he paints uh, sets during the day or during the week for his day job at some of the theme parks in California. But on the side, he's a graffiti artist. And when the fires happened in Paradise, California, afterwards he went in and painted on the, the burnt down relics within the area. So you see that used to be a chimney on the top one. He called that beauty among the ashes. The one on the bottom is called tomorrow's dream. And basically he took like plastic wrapped and, you know, stretched it between like, you know, 20 feet between two trees and then did that with spray paint. And you see that that face is overlooking so much acreage that was burned down behind him. It just never occurred to me that that could be used as a canvas. And I think that that's why I was so mesmerized and, and struck by it. Um, so he really gave back to the community that was hurting so badly. I mean, they just, they needed it. And a lot of people were just so grateful. And, and he did it on his own time. He did it on his own time. Weather has a lot of sides. We just talked about the scary, devastating, and deadly sides. But it's also breathtakingly beautiful. And then there's my personal favorite kind of weather which is weather phenomena. I love the strange and unusual, and it kind of makes me think of that quote from Beetlejuice. You guys seen Beetlejuice? I myself am strange and unusual, said Lydia Dietz. Anyway, take a look at this video. You might recognize the place. You are not gonna wanna take your eyes off of these clouds. They are so beautiful, drool-worthy gorgeous, but they do have a dirty secret, which we're gonna talk about in just a sec. Now, the technical term for them is nacreous or polar stratospheric clouds, but that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, though, does it? The slang name, however, is very fitting, mother of pearl clouds and they can be seen in the polar regions of the world and form much higher than most clouds. And it must be incredibly cold, I mean really cold. The temperature in the stratosphere has to be minus 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And when that happens, any moisture that's up there, well, it turns into ice crystals. And then the sun's rays will bounce off of these ice crystals as the sun is either rising or setting. Now that beautiful rainbow effect, which is the result that we're all seeing in this video, is called cloud iridescence. 
And sometimes these are mistaken for the Northern Lights, but nope, they are two very different things and they are not related. As for them having that dirty secret, well, these clouds contribute to the breakdown of the ozone layer, where they're basically triggering a chemical reaction. Now, to be fair, they are not the biggest threat to the ozone. Human activity is a far bigger problem. All right, so that video was taken about 600 miles north of here. So if anybody wants to go on a nacreous cloud hunt after this, please let me know, but we're gonna have to travel very, very far away. So I love stuff like that. And guys, if you see something cool and you wanna share it, I've got that email address. If you wanna snap a picture of it, I can give it to you. I'll be over at the IBM booth afterwards too. Um, but we, you know, we love submissions and, and we get some really, really cool stuff because everybody is a photographer now. Yes, we partner with Storm Chasers, but you know, the the entire world is our photographer. Have you heard of the term UGC? Yeah, user-generated content. Yep, so we rely on UGC. We work with some um, offices that, you know, we can buy stuff from, Newsflare, Viral Hog. I don't know if you've heard of those companies. Um, but whenever they get weather phenomena, I'm like, I want to do this story. Please, 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 give me that story. Give me that story. Because <laughs> I love it. I love clouds so much. I don't know if we have any Game of Thrones fans in the room, but there is a guy that I worked with named uh, Wisdom Udo, and he used to call me Mother of Clouds. <laughs> because <laughs> we would always talk about Game of Thrones in the break room. But I just love weather phenomena. These pictures are from Weather Underground. If you're looking for a cool gift idea, you can download these pictures for free and then just get them like printed out. I actually decorated our makeup room at work with these and I actually have copies in my living room too just because I think they're gorgeous. There's actually 16 kinds. All right, now let's talk about weather phenomena I'm probably never gonna report on. And I'm okay with that. Sharknado, anyone? Yeah. When that happens, I'm definitely running somewhere. But, you know, weather people do like to have fun, too. I love that the Seattle Weather Office just a few weeks ago put, you know, in the weather that keeps vampires happy category. And, of course, that was an ode to Forks, where the series Twilight took place. All right. Now the main point. I know I took a little bit longer to get to this than I expected, but I'm just having such a great time up here. So forgive me. J-Focus is just Awesome. All right, let's talk about the link. We actually have more in common than you think. Digital media broadcaster, coders, and developers. All right, so here is a look at a flow chart that I um, designed myself. So I built this, and uh, with the help of a couple of folks from my office, Danella Cohen and Todd Eaton, got to give them a shout out. Now, Todd Eaton is our head of DevOps, super nice guy. And I asked him, I was like, can you provide me like a good picture of engineers? And I had picked this one, but he suggested this instead. <laughs> Heavy metal engineers. Woo! All right, so I hope you guys can follow this from left to right. I know it's a little bit of a busy graphic. This is probably the most populated graphic that I have. But there's me with my on-camera crew. There's actually five of us. Um, Kate was not feeling well that day, I believe, but that's one of our very rare group pictures where we all get to be together because usually we're overlapping shifts. Dominica works the morning shift. She's the gal in the yellow dress. There's me in the green. There's Ari, and then there's Heather, and then um, we have Miss Kate who generally does our eco pieces. That is her passion, eco and climate. Um, so we feed into the editorial side, and then we go into video production, which of course then goes into the CMA content management system. I know you guys are familiar with Drupal, uh, Calliope, um, but it all feeds back around to DevOps and journalists and analysis. And as in terms of us, you know, you notice this bubble on the right storytelling for us, but for DevOps, it's technology speed, consistency across all platforms and devices, which equals customer satisfaction. Um, Todd Eaton, who I was just telling you about, just did a lecture on need for speed, about how they improved the speed of the website. Many of you here have probably been asked, I need you to make this website run faster. I need you to make this app run faster, because if people see things that are taking too long to load, whoosh, they are gone. They are absolutely gone. So online media is growing and here to stay. Um, and especially in the digital space. And I wanna tell you just a really quick story. So back in 2009, when I first started doing digital media, um, and this was initially um, just back in the, our old 
weather channel building. I think I forgot to mention that IBM did not buy the TV side. They just bought, well, pretty much everything else, um, including us in the digital space. But in 2009, um, pre-IBM purchase, we were actually asked to start doing mobile and web products. And there was a makeup artist who actually refused to do my makeup because she was like, digital, nobody's going to see that. And while it was quite mean, she actually did me a favor because I had to learn how to do my own makeup. So I had to do my own makeup nowadays. I don't have the luxury of a makeup artist. But, um, you know, my mom's the type of person who I said, honey, you got to make lemonade out of lemons sometime. And that's, that's what I did. But, you know, right now we're, we're pretty specialized in what we do. It used to be that people would come out of journalism school. They needed to know how to not just uh, write editorial or broadcast, they also needed to know how to code. That's not required anymore. So we're really specialized. Um, and so now, as we just talked about in the flowchart, we work independently, but we still have to understand each other's roles. And of course, how we support one another. Um, you know, we're able to reach people on their phones and their laptops. That has changed video broadcast of today. We talked about where the advertising dollars are going. But here's what we know at this point from our analytics. And we have this just wonderful young lady named Melissa, who I adore. And she studies analytics. And she finds a lot of interesting things. So we know that people want a broad variety of topics. They generally want it under a minute. 55 seconds is generally the sweet spot. Um, and if they want more statistics, we do give them that option. But she's also been able to find some interesting things, like if I turn my back to the camera to start pointing at the map, drop off. We can actually track the drop off rate. So within a minute story, we can find out how many people dropped off at 35 seconds, 45 seconds, or who made it to the end. So we do track the completion rates. But as I mentioned, there are some people that are just hungry for statistics. I mean, it's like, do you remember that uh, movie Short Circuit? Data, 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 data. You know, some people just love that. And that's where these guys come in. And I have to brag on them. I love these people so much. This is weather.com's content meteorologist. I lovingly call them the stat rats. Okay, I have so much respect for these guys. They pull up just some of the statistics uh, from years past, and it's like, oh, you want to know what was happening on January 3rd, 1902? I'll get that for you. Um, so we all work in part with each other. Here's what I'm going to say to you. You know, when we first started, first started doing the digital stuff, we were kind of just trying to figure out what worked. And we were trying all sorts of different stuff. You got to be willing to experiment. You got to be willing to make mistakes. I love this quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. And I mean, really, how often do we see the whole staircase? Not that often. I try new stuff. I fall flat on my face all the time. I tried to do a video about Maverick Waves a couple weeks ago, and I knew, I was like, oh gosh, this could have been done better. And so we have a meeting now every other week where we talk about videos, and I offered myself up as a sacrificial lamb, which is hard to do, especially amongst your peers. And I said, look, I feel like I could have done this video better. And you know, everybody started you know, analyzing it. And I take that feedback because I know that Maverick Waves are gonna come along again. So I want to be able to do it better the next time around. All right, speaking of doing things better, let's talk technology at its best. Ready for another umbrella game? Anybody? So I work for IBM, also known as the land of acronyms. <laughs> and we, of course, have our own acronyms in the weather world. But one of the newer ones that we're really excited to talk about is GRAPH. Does anybody want to take a crack at what it stands for? Mm -hmm. You guys are tough. I don't see any hand raising. All right, I'll just go ahead and tell you. It's Global High Resolution Atmospheric Forecasting Center. <laughs> you were so close, so close. Um, but before I talk about graph, I want to talk, um, I want to back up to a little bit before now. Um, so think about it. You know, we've been saying this for years. We have seen advancements in medicine. We've seen advancements in how we communicate. We live on our phones. We've seen advancements in home security. We, everybody's got a ring doorbell now and online security and just everything. Um, but we just needed to see more in the weather field. Big weather tech needed a serious upgrade. We've seen some great advancements. Um, so NOAA 
launched Go 16 back in November of 2016. And that offered greater resolution, also faster. Oh, I'm sorry, there was a typo there. Faster, <laughs> five times faster, not faster than before. Um, and then it actually got its new Go's East position. And we were able to see severe storms, wildfires, hurricanes, all of this updated information in real time 24-7. I think this really shows it to you, though. This is a side-by-side -side comparison. Go 16 on the left, goes 13 on the right. I mean, it is incredible. And this was actually taken at the same time, on the same day, by both of those satellites. So it really is amazing. So that was incredible. It happened at a crucial time. 2017 was a year of horrible hurricanes. We had Harvey, Irma, Maria, and that data from Go 16 let us better predict the rain that Harvey would produce. Harvey is a hurricane that rained its guts out over Texas in particular. A lot of Louisiana got hit very, very hard with rain. Top rainfall total, 60 inches in Nederland, Texas, over just a very short day span, 60 inches, okay? Like, I'm 5'2", that's basically the equivalent of me but it doesn't all just you know, stack up, it just goes everywhere. So the flooding was really, really bad. Just wanna show you this quick image. This just still amazes me. I mean, look at that thing. It's just massive, just massive. Another one that kind of made my stomach hurt, for sure. Um, but going back to graph, you know, Noah's on this mission. Um, IBM partnering with NCAR, National Center for Atmospheric Research, Atmospheric Research. They're on this mission that everybody deserves access to accurate and reliable weather information. There are so many people around the world, oh my gosh, we have no idea how lucky we are. We have no idea. There are so many people that they either have really poor access or <laughs> no access at all, even worse. So this has obviously got to change if we're going to protect life and property. Weather continues to be so impactful. I mean, every year I just feel like I'm talking about an increased number of billion dollar disasters across the globe. 2018, India had the worst flood in 100 years. So this is about just helping people, families, farmers, power outages, safety, just in general for everybody. And this particular model, which by the way, is completely free, okay? I'm not trying to sell anything here. It's completely free. You can pull it up and you will see that amazing resolution in your phone, which I'll show you the comparison to. So it's got five minute output versus one hour and it updates every hour versus every six to 12 hours. Um, it's using the Power9 GPU accelerated supercomputer, which is, which is really, really cool. And I wanna show you this. Um, so this is what, we generally have right now uh, 10 kilometers. You take it down to three kilometers. Now, if you notice up there, look at all those gaps. You know, you see all those gaps. And now with graph, this kind of gets knit. It's kind of like knitting together mesh, okay? And where we, especially you see at the top, where we thought, you know, people might just be getting some pockets of light rain before, now, if you kind of look at the top and you go over to three kilometers, you see that they're absolutely getting hammered. That is some serious rain coming down, probably some hail. So this is huge. This is made possible by first of its kind weather model. Um, it is the first weather model to run on a GPU accelerated uh, supercomputer. Um, to me, one of the most amazing things about it is that it runs five to six times faster, but it's actually less expensive. Yeah, so it's amazing. But again, this is something that people don't have to pay for. People can access it right now, okay? I wanna show you this video really quick. I think it's gonna explain things to you a little bit better. The raw power of weather is easy to see, but look closer. This isn't just weather, it's weather data. Data that feeds the forecast, that generates the insights, that power the world around us. Weather insights help put food on the table, keep the lights on, get us home safely. Yet hundreds of millions of people lack access to a reliable forecast, until now. The weather company, 
An IBM business has developed global high-resolution atmospheric forecasting. Driven by IBM Power9 supercomputing, IBM Graph maps weather data more frequently and at three times higher resolution to help generate the world's most accurate forecast, driving better decisions for parents, pilots, governments, everywhere on Earth. Helping farmers in Kenya grow more food with less water. Turning media companies in Australia into public safety companies. Turning power companies in India into outage prediction companies. We believe in weather for all. So that wherever you go, whatever you do, weather looks, sounds, feels, transformative. The Weather Company and IBM. We power better decisions so you can power a better world. Yeah. I'd be excited about this regardless of whether or not I worked for IBM. I mean, it is just so exciting. Um, so this is all being done by a global network of weather data. I love that the computers are named Dias, named for an ancient god of the daytime sky. But this is far from over. This project is very much ongoing. There are more and more sensors being added to airplanes that are going to be able to get us data over places that we haven't been able to see it before, deserts, tropical rainforest, all sorts of amazing things. And, um, you know, eventually uh, everybody's going to be working towards possibly, possibly, and of course this will have to involve permission, something to experiment with is a possibility of seeing people um, if they will say yes to letting us use their phones to get barometric pressure readings. And Barometric pressure is, is huge. There's actually a, a new study that just came out the other week from Colorado State University, Dr. Phil Klotzbach, very well known in studying hurricanes. He's actually um, suggesting to change the Saffir-Simpson scale, which is the hurricane rating system, from sustained wind speeds to pressure. So that's a, a really new, interesting study. But I want to talk to you about some other stuff. Okay, so I love comics. I know a lot of you probably love comics too. Spider-Man. I have a little crush. My husband knows it's okay. <laughs> um, but that's me with Spidey at Universal Studios. Um, I love that line, with great power comes great responsibility. And I do believe that coders and developers, you're a new, you're a new breed of hero. You know, like, you probably never thought of yourself as a first responder, but now you are. Your weapon of choice, it's a keyboard. I'm telling you, look, as a broadcaster, I really don't take myself that seriously. It's not like I'm curing cancer. I'm not. But <laughs> there are people and supercomputers out there that are sure as heck trying. My skill set is storytelling, and I'm really proud to report on that stuff, stuff that everybody in this room is, is contributing to. Here's how you can contribute even more if you want. Again. I will say this over and over to you in the next couple of days. You just have no idea how special you are. I don't know if you get told that enough, but you really are. And um, there's this initiative called Code and Response that IBM partnered up with with the David Clark Foundation, calling on the world's 24 million developers to use open source technology to help communities in need. And so this is about bringing open source solutions across the world to everybody, okay? This is not checkbook philanthropy. Again, crafting solutions that work on the local level, that have the ability to scale and help any community anywhere. This is my last video for you. This is a documentary which is currently available uh, streaming on Amazon and Apple. The whole thing is about, um, I wanna say an, an hour and 15 minutes or so but here's a look at the trailer. Our planet's going through a time of change. It's been a horrific year. It's scary. When the earthquake happened, I could just hear people screaming. I felt how an animal would feel when we destroy its home. So it's up 18 inches in the house. 
that's my lower level right there. All signs are pointing towards the old phrase that this is the new normal. The howling of the wind is very scary. I just started crying, like, when is this going to stop? Last year was record-breaking in the acreages that were burned, and we already surpassed that this year. There are natural challenges and disasters that we perhaps can't change. Somebody needs to say, let's do this different, let's do this better. Empathy is a very key part of creation, because only when you listen, you can respond. How grandly are we willing to act? Code is a form of poetry, but trying to solve a problem. This is a call to action. How can technology I build today affect people around the world generations from now? It's a mobile app that would give you access to data in an offline mode. Goosebumps. Every time I see it. Every time I see it. All right. Um, let's talk about past winners, because this is a fairly new initiative. Uh, 2018, it was Project OWL, which stands for Organization, Whereabouts, and Logistics. And that little thing that you see buried in the sand is called a duck device. And so they have papa ducks and mama ducks that are basically trying to talk to each other. And the first place that they went to was, uh, was Puerto Rico, and they've actually since started um, having students help with them to deploy and install these devices. After Hurricane Maria, nobody could get communication out. Um, there's a very well-known uh, band out there. Have any of you guys heard of Zach Brown Band? Zach Brown Band? Yeah, they're, they're awesome. The drummer, Danny De Los Reyes, um, he lives in the Atlanta area. And I was able to interview him, and uh, Danny um, is from Puerto Rico, and his, his mom still lives there, and Mama Matilda, and he couldn't reach her. I mean, this is, this is literally a rock star with more disposable income than certainly you know, I have, and he wasn't able to get to her for three days, you know, and... I remember interviewing him and him talking about that and choking up. And of course, when a grown man starts crying, I'm going to start crying too. Um, but nobody wants to see that happen again. You know, people should not have to be writing chalk on their roofs saying, help me. This is what I need. Send this. They need to be able to communicate. And these duck devices are this very interesting network. Um, there's more information about Project OWL out there. It's really cool. It's really cool. I don't know how the judges choose the winners. There are so many submissions to this, and they're all amazing. This was the 2019 winner, Prometeo. And this team was made up of a firefighter, a nurse, uh, and three IT professionals. And what they wanted to do was build a device that would basically strap to a firefighter's arm, and you see it in the picture below, and it looks at the firefighter's health and safety in real time. I have so much respect for firefighters, too. I mean, they put their lives on the line every single day. It is absolutely incredible what they do. So, who's going to be the winner in 2020? It could be you. It could be in this very room. If you win, you better tweet me and tell me because I'm going to Venmo you money and buy you dinner. I will be so excited for you. Seriously, if it's one of you, you better tell me or I'm coming after you. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so in just a few weeks, uh, the 2020 Call for Code Challenge is going to be uh, released. Last year, the submission window opened up in, in March. But again, that's something really exciting that we are uh, very much looking forward to. In closing, we're all connected by weather, even if you dress like this guy. I really hope one of you is going to be dressed like this at the dinner later tonight. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. This has been a blast. I'm so excited for you. 
I hope this has pumped you up a little bit about JFocus 2020. Matthias and his team have worked so hard to bring you guys all sorts of new and interesting information. Please stop by and see me at the IBM booth and talk to me. If you have ideas, if you just want to say hi, talk to me about metal music or <laughs> Game of Thrones or, or whatever, please come over. Again, that's a look at our video submissions. If you see something cool, don't put yourself in harm's way. Please do not. It's not worth it. Not worth it. But if you see something cool like those Mother of Pearl clouds, you know, send it to us and we'll feature you. We always give our people credit in the upper right-hand corner. Thanks again, guys. It's been a pleasure.